And today I'm gonna to teach you how to install the HD textures of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. These textures will also work as well with Sun and Moon. And we're also gonna remove the outlines, remove the awful blur, and pushing the game to 60 FPS and more. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, the first thing that you're going to need to do, you're gonna click on the link below in the video that'll take you to a Google Drive. For my example, I'm going to copy and paste directly the link. This will take you to a tab where they're previewing the file. Click on download. It'll open up another window and don't worry, just click download anyway and it will start the download or the textures. This might take a little while to download the textures so you are free to do something else while in the meantime the process finishes. All right, now that it's finished, all you have to do is click on the zip file. It'll open up a pop-up window with four files. You're gonna need to open up your emulator directory. You're gonna double click the asahar.exe now that the emulator is open, right click on the game that you want to add the textures, go to open, go directly to custom texture location and click on it. It'll open up a window pop-up. All you have to do is drag and drop the HD textures and let the process finish. Now that the textures are already copied and filed, let's go back to our emulator. Go to emulation. You're gonna go to configure, go to graphics. You're gonna go to use custom textures. You're gonna click on OK. And you just double click on the game that you want to launch. And with that, the textures should pop up in HD. To see if the textures actually work, you're going to press F7 on your keyboard. And you can see that mine's actually worked. This is the low resolution textures, and this is the HD textures that have been applied to the game. And with that, that should be it. The HD textures have already been successfully installed for your game. Now, as a bonus, you can see that I have currently updated the UI for the Pokemon game. But if you do miss the classic Volius textures where the UI was fully transparent, there is a way to do it. To restore the old textures from the game, you're going to right click on the game, open, go directly to custom texture location. It'll pop up the HD textures. You're going to double click the file. You're going to go back to your zip file where you downloaded the textures. Go to the Volvas UI, grab seven of the textures that appear here, drag and drop it here. Say yes to replace the files. And with that, the textures have been replaced. Now we're going to open up the game once more to see how they're going to look like. Just give it its time. Let me take a quick battle. And there it is. And with that, you have the classic UI transparent look, originating from Voyo's original textures. All right, now that we have installed the HD textures, the next step, we're gonna teach you how to remove the outlines from your Pokemon game. There is a red post called removing outlines. You're also free to Google search it as well. You're gonna scroll all the way down. There gonna exist a comment on how to remove the outlines. You're gonna have to pay attention to what version of your Pokemon game has. In my case, as you can see the copy of the Pokemon Ultra Moon, there is no number in it, meaning that it's version 1.0. If there is a number below the icon, it's an updated one. The Pokemon Ultra Sun will be version 1.2. Once you find your code, I'm going to open up my notepad. Uh, since I already have the codes written for Pokemon Ultra Sun 1.2. To add the no outline cheat, you're going to right click your Pokemon game. Go to properties. Go to the cheats. Add a cheat. Name your cheat. Below the code, I'll copy paste the code that I have written here in my notepad. Press save and it'll create a new cheat. You're gonna click on the square box and press OK. You're gonna double click your game to start. I'll take you directly to the results. And with that, that should be it. There are no outlines on this Pokemon game anymore. Please take note that all the codes will work on depending on the version of the game, except for Sun 1.0. But for the rest of the codes, it should work so that way you can enjoy Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon or Sun and Moon without the unnecessary outlines. All right, now that we have removed the outlines for the game, I'm going to teach you how to remove that weird blur or ghosting effect when upscaling this game for your current Pokemon game. You're going to go to this Reddit post that I have discovered here to remove the ghosting on your game. Click on the GBA temp if you're looking for more specific details about how to remove the ghosting. For this case, I'm going to use the Ultra Sun 1.2 that's below here. I'm going to copy the code that I have written on my text. This will be the same instructions as teaching you how to add cheats on your game. You're going to go to emulation, Configure current application. You're gonna go to cheats. Uh, you're gonna add another cheat. This time we'll call it no ghosting. Now that's done, let's add the code. We click save and we should put a check mark here. If you see that the cheat has already taken in effect, that should solve the ghosting issues when upscaling this game for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. You can finally now enjoy the game without those annoying blurs that really do bother experience when trying to enjoy this game in 4K. All right, the next step is adding more frame rate to your game. Now I know there's a cheat that can help you improve the frame rate for your game, but it ended up looking more like a fast forward feature. But luckily enough, there is a great alternative to increase the frame rate of your game. If you go to the link or Google search lossless scaling, 
This is a software that can help you improve the frame rate for your game. Now, it may use frame gen technology to improve the frame rate for your game, and it may cost around $6.99 to purchase it, but it is totally worth it since it will apply a smoother frame rate not only to your current Pokemon games and emulators, if not all old games, new games, or all games in general. So it is worth the purchase if you don't mind the novelty of the frame gen. All right, now I'm gonna teach you how to improve the frame rate. I have my Riva Tuner statistics set to 30 frames per second for my emulator. I'm gonna open up the Azahar emulator and double click my Pokemon game. I'll take you directly to a battle. All right, as you can see here, the game is running at 30 FPS. You're gonna go to your Steam icon, right click it, and click on lots of scaling. This might take a little bit to load up. All right, what you're going to do, if you're on the default profile, you just go to the Capture API to DXGI or WGC, depending on your preference. You can customize the Q target. I'm gonna leave mine as two. To target the frame generation, let's use the latest LSFG 3.1. This is optional for the frame rate. You can pick adaptive if you want a specific frame rate running at between 60 or 120 or in any odd number, or you can go to fix and just multiply it based on the base frame rate. Since the game is currently running at 30 FPS, I'm gonna leave this two times example since our recording footage could only record up to 60 FPS. Everything should be leave it as it is. Click on the scale button here. You're gonna minimize it and go to the emulator and double click on it. Now that the frame rate has already been taken in effect, I'll show you how it looks like on the emulator. And here it is. I do apologize for the swap screen. This is how the game will look like in 60 FPS running with the lossless scaling. Now, please be aware that there's some minor artifacting that can happen when trying this software. If you do despise the artifacts or you think it's too smooth and feel free to customize the frame rates or the values to your customization. From my personal experience, I would recommend not using Reba Tuner statistics since I think it looks way too smooth and instead just leave the game as is and just crank it up to three times the base frame rate. Since everything's all set up and ready to play the game at smooth frame rate, the last step I want to introduce would be the reshade. The reshade are filters that can enhance or improve the experience of your game. If you go directly to the reshade website or Google search it, I'll decline the cookies. Click on download. Download reshade. Now that reshade's downloaded, you just click on the reshade to open. Go to the browse button. You're going to find the asahar.exe or any citrafork.exe and double click on it. Next, we're going to stick to the OpenGL for now. Next, we're going to check them all and let this process finish. All right, now that Reshade has already been installed, uh, we can click on finish. Now we're gonna go to the emulator directory. Uh, you're gonna find a file called opengl32.dll. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna need to rename the opengl32.dll to reshade64.dll. I'm gonna copy paste it. All right, make sure that there's no repeated extensions. All right, now that you renamed the file, we're gonna need to inject the file. You're gonna go to this website that I have provided a link below the description to Marty's Mods. Uh, you're going to click on the 64-bit injector and click on it. It'll download the file. Okay, once you have downloaded the 64-bit injector, you're going to go to your downloads file. You're going to minimize the window tab. You're going to go directly to your emulator here. You're going to need to drag and drop the inject64.exe to the file. Now that everything is all done, uh, you're going to go to your command prompt. Go to your window search bar and write CMD. And there's a command prompt. Click on it. What you're going to do, uh, you're going to drag the inject64.exe here and press space and you write down the name of the emulator that you're trying to run. In my case, it'll be the asahar.exe and you press enter. Once you have the waiting for X process to spawn, uh, you go to your emulator and open it up normally. You could see that it has already injected the reshade. Before you can initiate, you're going to go to emulation, go to configure, go to your graphics options. Make sure in the advanced settings that there should be the OpenGL enabled. It will not work with software nor Vulkan with the process that we're about to do. Now we're going to double click the game. If you see something that's loading up the effects, congratulations. That means the filters have officially worked. This might take a little bit while to load up the game and the filters. So please give it a time since it's a small laborious process. All right, now that the game is running, uh, you're going to go to your home menu, skip the tutorial. What you're going to do, you're going to download a file below the description. It'll be the Pokemon Enhance.ini. You're going to drag that file and drop it to your emulator. And with that done, you're going to go back to your window and click on the square here and double click the Pokemon Enhance.ini. Now that everything's all loaded, we're going to fiddle a few settings here. Go to your settings. Uh, you're going to scroll all the way down where it says the show FPS. Disable that. That'll get rid of the annoying pop up here. Now we're going to click on the home button to put it away. And now we're going to test out the full uh, Pokemon experience. I'll label my own preset from the lossless scaling. All right, I'm going to switch the screens here. 
All right, and with that, that should be it. Uh, we added the improved colors to your game, and not only that, we also improved the frame rate as well to your current uh, game experience. If you enjoyed this video, just give it a like, and most importantly, have fun enjoying this game. Take care.